So despite the result yesterday against United, Unai Emery has been by far one of the best Premier League managers so far in the Premier League season. Now, usually he does deploy a 4-4-1-1. He didn't yesterday, hence maybe the result. The 4-4-1-1, though, is a fantastic formation, which he managed to beat City and Arsenal with. It works very well inside of the game, and we're going to test today with four very, very, very different teams. If you do enjoy the tactics on this channel, be sure to leave a like, and be sure to sub as well, because it's free and it helps out the channel massively. Let's get into the testing phase, where three teams are going to be his current and previous teams. So we're going to start off with his current team as we usually do when we are going to replicate a manager. That is going to be Aston Villa. But we had a fantastic season. No, we didn't win the league, obviously. But we did get Champions League football, which is really good to see. Cement in a fourth place finish based off goal difference just ahead of Manchester United. But what really made this season sort of a boosted up version is going to be this Conference League win against Lille and a very, very, very good final there. Also getting to the semi-finals in the FA Cup, where unfortunately... Manchester City were a little bit too much for us to deal with. We also scored 82 goals in the league. Now, to be fair to him as well, Emery is doing a very good job at scoring goals with his team in the Premier League. And we've somewhat matched that coming in in second place, I believe, just behind Manchester City, which I'm going to take. 40 goals conceded. We did pick up two red cards. And again, I will be going over how you can eliminate a few of them red cards. But we do play a quite aggressive style, so it is to be expected. Ollie Watkins doing Ollie Watkins things, picking up 40 goals in the Premier League season, or actually across all competitions. He he did play in a fair few that is four competition so possibly to be expected but still a really good stat line Zanidio comes in with a 7.61 when it comes for the highest average rating and Douglas Luiz picks up 24 assists and it is also going to be Martinez one of my favorite keepers in the Premier League massively underrated a 96% pass completion over to the team stats we're not actually going to dominate any of them in terms of finishing even in rank one which again I'm not too fussed about because where we finished and obviously within the conference league we were pretty consistent though obviously I'm going to go through all of them so you can see and get a rough idea what happened. 82 goals obviously scored. Second place, only two obviously failing against Manchester City. Third place when it goes for shots for pass completion, 88%. Quite good there. Dribbles made, eighth place. Most tackles won. We had a lot of the ball, so not really going to be that expect us to be high up on this list conceded very solid as well 40 goals i'm ranking us in fifth place and the clean sheets actually we're not even going to feature on so we did concede a fair few goals compared to obviously the likes of city liverpool arsenal but for a first season with no signings in the villa save i'm going to take this and run to the park with it data hub wise again we are going to be scoring over double to what we are going to be conceding over two goals a game at 2.16 a 78 percent tackle win ratio that 88 is nearly almost an 89 percent pass completion and the great thing as well we're averaging over 50 15 and a half shots every single game. But over to that squad screen, then we are going to get a bit more of an understanding of who's been scoring the goals, who hasn't, and it is going to be the star man, as in real life, Ollie Watkins. 40 goals for him. DRB, fantastic player with 26. Nicolo comes in with 21. Jacob Ramsey didn't even discuss this guy in the intro at all. 14 goals from him and 12 assists. 10 from Paul Torres from set pieces. 9 for Buendia. Douglas Luiz as well with 8 coming in. Coutinho having a good season out on loan as well. Leon Bailey with 7. Moreno with five as well. And the assists, we are going to see Douglas Luiz playing a really big part in this team with 24. Diaby with 21. Zanilio coming in with 16. 12 for Jacob Ramsey. Buendia coming in with 10. John McGinn, probably one of my favourite up there of the best players of the season so far in real life. Also picking up 10 assists. 8 for Moreno. Kamara with 7. So a lot of players getting involved with the assist category. I mean, we are going to be talking about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6 players getting involved there. Goal scorers as well. A lot of different players. Obviously, Ollie Watkins topping the charts by, you know, quite a fair gap. A 14 place gap there. But overall, really impressive how it's gone. Loads of players getting involved in the goals and the assists, which you know by now on this channel is a must for me. Next is going to be his previous team at Villarreal. Now, I remember watching Villarreal v Manchester United in Europa League. I'm not even going to talk about that game, actually. Let's put that to the back of the head because Emery outclassed us. Simply tactical genius. I rate Emery to the absolute highest level. Incredible manager. But you know what? That aside, we actually had quite a good season with Villarreal. Champions League spot by four points over Real Sociedad. Couldn't really compete for the league, though, as to be expected with a team like this. Again, no silence were made throughout the entire test. Gerard Moreno picks up 34 goals. It's going to be Morales picking up a 7.23 highest average rating. Danny Parejo, an absolute... He feels like he's been playing for years, this guy. 13 assists on him. Raul Albio, again, a real old boy coming in. You can tell that by the picture. With 95% pass completion, 69 goals scored and 50 conceded, so not the most dominant in his division, to be honest, but what we did do 
and nearly actually got over the line, but it was a 2-1 defeat in the final. It's this Europa League here. Unfortunately, PSG again has happened a couple of times now. Find themselves in that final and obviously just about edge that in the final. But overall, a really good season. Not too much to show in the actual league stats because obviously we didn't really dominate too much of it. And going over to the Data Hub, it's going to be relatively close. So this is a really good indicator on how a tactic performs in different leagues. So I'd say very similar sort of teams. So like Villa are in that sort of top mix, same as Villarreal. In the Premier League, we were actually quite competitive in terms of being in a feature in some of them stat lines. In the Spanish League, we weren't really as dominant, but we got the results. We got some grindiness, and that's all that matters. 1.82 goals on per game scored, just over 13 shots as well, and 88.88% pass completion. So that is two now, nearly averaging towards that 88-89 mark if you were to combine both of them. Attacker win ratio of 76.35. So, so far, it is pretty consistent. Obviously, when you're playing as sort of like a top four team, they are going to be quite gritty games, which is why I do recommend you download all three of the variants, because if I was playing every single game, then I would obviously switch between each one in the game, different scenarios, if that makes sense. So I would recommend you get all three because they are really, really beneficial to you guys as well. But overall, these are the weakest teams. Let's go over now to the strong teams. Of course, if you have, you might have forgot. Hopefully you haven't. Um, Emery did obviously manage PSG at one stage of his career, and we had a fantastic season. Nearly going invincible is going to be the one loss, which does ruin it against Nice in a 4-2 defeat, which is quite a good game from Nice, to be fair. But an even better season from us. 87 points, the quadruple as well. The Champions League against Porto, the French Cup against Monaco, and a trophy de champion against Toulouse, making a fantastic quadruple, to be honest. 110 goals scored, only 29 conceded, and Mbappe coming in with 37 goals and a bang on eight highest average rating. And it is going to be Carlos Soler and Kylian Mbappe also joint assisters with 19. Well, it is going to be Kalon Navas getting on for, I mean, that is nearly a perfect pass completion at 98%. We are going to feature in a fair few of these stat lines. It's going to be the most points per game at 2.56, the most goals at 110, the fewest shots against 212, really good stat line to have. The most shots for, again, a really important stat line at 713. Possession-wise, we were up there as well, joint top with Marseille with 57% of the ball. So you can expect this to have very good levels of possession with the better teams and also dribbles made at 693. Not too bad. The hub wise, we are going to see a big, big change from playing as a sort of mid table, sort of Premier League team to a real powerhouse in the relative league. That is going to be 3.24 goals per game. A conceded at only 0.85, so way under a goal a game, over three goals a game scored, getting on for 21 shots per game, being put at the opposition goal as well. An 89.54 pass completion and an 80.45 tackle win ratio. Utter dominance. Lastly, we always use four teams. I wanted to get a Turkish team in, switch it up a little bit, test with a random team. That is going to be Fenerbahce, favoured second in their relative division, so still a very, very big team. And again, the one loss ruins the Invincible spree, which is going to be against Galatasaray as well. Two losses ruin two Invincible seasons. How annoying is that? But still a very, very good season. Winning the Turkish treble, the Turkish Cup against Besiktas, the Super Cup obviously against Galatasaray, and the league against everyone. It is going to be 113 goals scored zero red cards and 41 goals conceded it is going to be under picking up 17 goals i believe the former leicester man if i am right i might be wrong ryan kemp with a 7.47 highest average rating and it is going to be the former man manchester united fan here it's going to be fred coming in with 17 assists we love to see that and a 95 95 this is ridiculous again from rodrigo almost a perfect pass completion you can't really hate it team stat wise is going to be four which are going to be very good talking points 2.5 you know, this is a very good one. You, it's probably going to be in a title, to be honest, because that is a really, really good stat line. Anything over sort of 2.3, 2.4 points per game is shows how good the tactic actually is. Most goals at 113 as well. Most shots at 720. And the real key one to prove the possession side, we weren't first, but we were joint second with Adana, I believe that is, with 61% of the ball. Obviously, Besiktas, we're always going to win that play in that style of play. We necessarily aren't playing all out tiki taka. So I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. Not an expected stat line, but we've got to take it. Data Hub wise as well, 2.97 goals per game, just over one conceded on this occasion at 1.08, over 18 shots a game, basically edging towards 19, an 89.18% pass completion, and a tackle win ratio of 78. Point three two. I want to showcase a little game against one of the best teams in the Premier League. That is going to be Liverpool, just to show how well this tactic performs against the real big teams in the Premier League. And it was actually quite a, it was a very good start. We went 2-0 up here, Watkins in through to the main man himself, into the bottom right corner. A great start inside of 34 minutes. And we go again, just after half time. they're winning the back, DRB backstick again, 
a bit of a dodgy clearance. Why have Liverpool signed Emerson Royale? I will never know. But a good finish from Jacob Ramsey, nevertheless. And it is going to be Liverpool, I believe, actually get a goal now from Endo, if I'm right in saying. It is from Endo. Honestly, Martinez needs to be doing better there. But we, we got one goal again from Digne, making it a 3-1 away win. You can't complain. It's going to be against Arsenal. I'm not afraid to show highlights where we are going to concede goals because you are going to concede goals with a team like Villa. That is pretty common knowledge. But the fact we're winning games against Liverpool and Arsenal very, very tough opponents and four goals against Arsenal as well. Really does sum up how good this tactic is. And that is just a bit of individual brilliance from the main man himself. And honestly, what a sign in this could be for Villa. DRB ball in the box into Pau Torres. Some of the players Villa have nowadays, it doesn't even feel right saying them. But obviously they are a very top team in England right now. There's no denying that. A great ball back stick and a great, even better header, making it a 3-0 advantage. And at this point in the game, Arsenal could have come back quite easily. Great play through the middle into Kai Havertz, back through into Jesus. I'm not going to lie to you, it's just really good football. A great goal to get back into the game, and it didn't really stop there. Luckily for us, we did get a goal to obviously sort of iron out a little bit of the comeback. Just a fantastic finish into the bottom right-hand corner. But Arsenal did bounce back, but it was a little bit too late to sort of give the momentum for a full comeback. A great ball from Saka over into Trossard. Very questionable from Martinez there, though, I will say. But we'll take it on the chin because it is going to be an easy win. Of course, now time for your favourite part of the video. That is going to be the tactic breakdown. I do want to quickly say thank you to all of the names coming down the screen right now. These are going to be new or existing Patreon members. Patreon is a great way to support the channel. And also, you get over nine perks, including access to all three of the tactic downloads in one simple file. You also get early video and early tactic release. You get priority in the rebuild and the tactic request. You get one-on-one -on -one tactical help, a Discord role, and access to the monthly giveaway. Sometimes even two monthly giveaways, which in the past have been football shirts, £50 PayPal gift cards, loads of random stuff, which has got a real good value. So definitely check it out in the description below. But let's go over and talk about the player role. So it is going to start off with a goalkeeper, simply on a defensive duty. So nice and simple. A wing back is they going to come in on support on run wide with the ball. So essentially with these wing backs, they are going to be quite aggressive, by far not on the attacker mentality, I will say that. But they do play a decent part. But obviously, as you can see on the screen now, both of the options on the left and on the right are going to be on attack and so we don't want to make them too attacker minded so we're too vulnerable at the back but then go with a ball playing defender on the right hand side typically I play Pau Torres in this situation in this position sorry and it worked really really well alongside of a central defender simply on the default the wing back on the left again is going to be matched as the right back indeed that is going to be another wing back on support on run wide with the ball so again same story goes somewhat attacking not too attacking because we do have very attacker minded players on the left and the right right hand side and on the left hand side that is going to be the John McGinn role he plays this role probably the best I've ever seen to be honest one of the few players you can say would be classed as a wide midfielder he's going to be on attack on take more risks and also sit narrower alongside a deep line playmaker in the midfield who is simply going to be on support these two work really well alongside each other they really really do next to the DLP is going to be a box to box simply on the supportive option if you are playing as a bit of a powerhouse team a PSG a Bayern Munich whoever you want to say or maybe Maybe you built up a team to that caliber i would recommend actually adding on to get further forwards instruction so i think you could definitely get away with it on the right hand side is going to be the inverted winger on attack on take more risks and also set narrower again this is going to be a very easy role to facilitate with your team a lot of players can play this role you could use a default winger if you wanted to as well if you haven't got a player that can play this position but if you can stick to what's on it because it works really really well going up the field is going to be where jacob ramsey spent a lot of his time that is going to be the shadow striker on attack and to finish it off, it is going to be the pressing forward simply on attack, which naturally makes a move into channels, close down more, and also tackle harder so you don't really need anything else and over to the team instructions it's all going to be based off a clean slate on the positive the positive mentality i did try attacking i tried balanced and the real real good one that worked as a general tactic is going to be on that positive mentality the attack and width is actually going to be set to standard so we're going to take that we're also going to pass the ball into space because you and i emery although he's going to have a shorter passing directness which i will have on now it's not always short tiki taka style if there is a good run a good run's been made into a good area of space we're going to try and find it, hence why the deep line playmaker is playing in the team because he plucks out them balls really, really well. We're also going to have play out from the back on because I believe, although I wouldn't say Villa are the most common team to do this all the time, they definitely do have that element of the game when they need to do so. And again, it works really well in FM, so we are going to back it. I always say in my tactic videos if something might not be 100% replicated, but just to get a little bit of better performance in the game, we are going to have it on. And also, I do believe Villa do play on, on some occasions, so we are going to have that on. The tempo is going to be set to higher again 
why not back it? Over to the team instructions. It's all going to be based off a clean slate on the positive mentality, the positive mentality. Just to clarify that, we're going to have this set to standard. We're going to pass the ball into space. We're going to play out from the back. Do not worry. These are not going to be the situations. We're going to have a shorter passing directness. Again, I wouldn't say it's a strict tiki-taka style, but also it's not 100% long ball. So this works really, really well. The tempo is going to be maxed out. So it is going to be very aggressive on your players. So make sure you've got rotation, your training, and you've just got really good depth in general. Three golden rules to follow. And very basic and very simple, to be honest, just mixed crosses. So not a lot selected on us because I think you can sometimes overcomplicate stuff. And in a system like this where, you know, it's not the most commonly used formation of 4-4-1-1, there wasn't too much wanting to play around because it's very balanced. Obviously, four at the back, four in midfield. Basically, you can have two up top with that shadow striker getting in the right position. So it does play almost like a 4-4-2, but not the same. Therefore, I didn't really want to overcomplicate it. Hence the simple approach. And lastly, out of possession. Yeah, you know this isn't right. You cannot have a high press line of engagement. We're going to go over mid block, the Emery way, the standard defensive line. We are also going to go over much more often on the trigger press and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Now, I know what you're going to say. Josh, he plays a higher line. He does play a higher line, but we'll save that for the attack and variant because in this game, especially, you get absolutely pasted with a higher line and a mid-block playing against some of the big teams. So I'll save that for the attack and variant for a desperate time, a desperate situation. So that is why the default tactic is going to be on standard. You should expect with PSG, you'd expect a few games which are a bit of a paste, but I did not expect a Champions League final against Porto for one, but for two, not to win 6-0, a utter dominant Champions League final against a full-strength Porto team. Just great. Great play from back to front, really. There, a great finish from Ramos as well. Nothing cost could be done, and it's just a really good, a really good goal. And another one coming here. Dembele on the ball. He's going to drive at the back line and actually go all alone. That is shocking from the Porto team. And that's the great thing about this tactic as well. We're not afraid to have them individual runs, individual bursts, because at the end of the day, sometimes you are relying on that in this tactic as well. I will be honest and openly say that. Not all the time, but it does help when you've got players like Dembele who can run at the back line, same as Mbappe into Vitinha, into Soler into Agate and how quickly that got transitioned from the left into the central area is absolutely mind-blowing. Soler down the middle, or down the left, sorry, into Mbappe, into the middle, should have been a pen. Agate's going to get the goal anyway. How about that for another finish? He is quite dominating this Champions League final as we are seeing the flares going off there. Vitinha into Soler. We're making it look simple. Trust me, it's not that easy to win a Champions League final. But when you've got this tactic, it clearly is. And when you're playing as PSG. Mbappe out to Hernandez, into Mbappe. It's dominance. Not as impressive, maybe, but still, it is going to be a cup final, the Turkish Cup final against Besiktas. Obviously, a very, very tough team in this division. A little bit lucky there with a the rebound, but recovered at back well. Good pass and play. And I'm going to be honest, I don't think Gonok was expecting that striking goal because he wasn't. Who would expect that strike? Absolutely incredible scenes there. Great pass and play from the set piece. Little cut inside from Hakan. Ball through. Great run. Great finish. Back to back trophies. Of course, as promised, we are going to go over an attacking variant and also a defensive variant. The attacking one is definitely designed for attacking situations. I wouldn't recommend necessarily going into a game like this. If you're chasing the game, you need a goal desperately, then feel free to use it. That's why I include it. Again, Patreons can simply download all three, but I do include the breakdown and I would recommend staying by and watching the entire video so you can get all three variants for your tactic, for your team, not your tactic. But let's go over the player role. So the goalkeeper, I'm not going to waste your time on. It does simply remain the same. The wing back is also going to be on support on run wide in fact the back four are going to be very very similar because there's only so much change you can do to an attack and tactic without completely sabotaging the back line so i didn't want to have these on attack as well because that would be way too overkill because we've made a lot of changes in the team instructions as well what we have changed is on the right hand side the inverted winger is now going to be on shoot more often as well same rules apply as i always say when i have this instruction on if your winger has not got above 12 finishing, I would not recommend it at all. We're going to go with two box to boxes because the right hand side of one is going to be told to get further forwards. The left hand side of one isn't. And the reason why is because I don't want both of them on that instruction because I think it would be way too overkill. But I wanted literally a role which gets forward and gets back. And the last time I checked, a box to box is literally the perfect role to do that. So that is why we've double stacked the box to box. The left hand side is going to be a wide midfield player on attack on the same instructions. The shadow striker remains the same. And we have gone with the advanced sword. So we're going to push that striker up even more from the press and forward and have him on shoot more often. Team instructions. And we are also going to change the mentality to attacking. So from positive to attacking for 
the attacking tactic. We're going to pass into space. We're going to overlap left and overlap right now. Really get them fullbacks involved because we are chasing the game. This remains exactly the same. The only other change to this tab is going to be the addition of run at defense. And trust me, with a Unai Emery team, when they're running at you, that's the last thing you want to see. And even with the Aston Villa team, they've got some absolute ballers. So if you're playing as a powerhouse team, you've got to be unstoppable. Trust me. Transition, nice and simple. Keep it short. The only change is going to be distribute quickly. Again, because we are chasing the game, it makes zero sense to not have that instruction on. Lastly, for the attack invariant, that is going to be the out of possession. And this is where we are going to deploy that high defensive line matched with that mid-block line of engagement much more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. So exactly the same as a default, but the real big change is going to be that high defensive line. It makes a massive difference playing from this to this. It pushes the whole team up and really gets in their face. I wouldn't recommend playing every game like it. But if you are chasing a game desperately, you need a goal. You need this in your team. You really do. Of course, we've got to have a defensive variant. Unai Emery, some, sometimes known for that dark arts, wasting time, etc, etc. And that's exactly what we're going to have in this system. Not the time wasting, but we have gone for a much more possession orientated system. So that is why we're going to have two ball playing defenders on this occasion. Both of the wing backs are going to drop back to defend simply on the defaults. So nothing too special there. Nice and restricted that back line. Not going to commit. Never going to be out of position. Just there to simply defend. The line in front of them, I call it a line because essentially it's two back lines of four the wide midfield player is going to be on support simply on sit narrower so again not going to overcommit. going to help defend as well a very handy player to have next to him is going to be a ball winning midfield player on support on hold position and mark tighter going to be very frustrating for an opposition to actually try and get a chance at your goal here because we're going to have one player who is going to look to mark tighter on a certain player really man mark and pocket a player out the game which is needed in a system like this Next to him, we're going to have one sort of player role, which is still going to be fairly attacking, which is going to be the box-to-box. -box. He is going to get further forwards naturally. That is the DNA of a box-to-box. -box. But also, he is going to come back and help defend, which obviously we need to have in a defensive tactic. On the right-hand side is going to be the inverted winger, who is simply going to be on support. Again, not going to overcommit going forwards. Is going to track back and help defend. So that is why I do refer to this sometimes as a back eight. Going up the field a little bit is going to be the advanced playmaker coming in, who is simply going to be on shoot less often and take more risks. And we are going to remain with that pressing forward on attack because even though we're very defensive, we don't want to get to a point where we've got nothing to offer going forwards. And just having a pressing forward who's still up there, putting pressure on, you never know what can happen. But going over to the team instructions, the mentality is now going to drop to balance. That is right, a balanced mentality. And there are going to be a lot of changes. So do stick by because we're going to talk them through. So passing to space is going to remain. Playing out from the back, of course, in a possession-based tactic, is also going to remain. We're not Obviously, we're not going to overlap left and overlap right anymore because we are simply trying to hold on to the ball and not overcommit any sort of players. Much shorter is going to come in on the directness, match with a slightly lower tempo. And the real key instruction and the real key change is going to be dribble less. Now, this essentially is the perfect instruction to have if you are trying to play boring football. I will word it as that because it is very boring football. Passing it side to side, just dominating the game, frustrating the opposition. Although it isn't the most attractive and the most, you know, ticky tacka high press and high tempo game, it does get results and it does defend games out. So trust me. Trust the process. In transition, it's going to be a bit of a mix. We're going to have counter press. Nothing when possession has been won because I don't want to hold the shape because I feel like we're going to become too stagnant in the areas we are. But also, I don't want to counter because I do not want any of them players flying forward. So we're simply going to leave it unticked. We're going to slow the pace down while playing to anyone across the back line with short goal kicks. Lastly, we're going to go with the mid block and the standard line match with a standard when it comes to the trigger press. And we're still going to prevent short, goal short goalkeeper distribution. Don't know what I just said there because we have got a pressing forward so it makes sense to have that on and that is going to complete the Unai Emery 4411 requested so many times on this channel I do apologize about the delay hopefully you guys enjoy it it's a very hard one to make I will say there's not many 4411s about and you have to get it working because it is very similar to a 442 when the shadow striker does push up and obviously get involved but hopefully it works really really well I had a very good set of results as you've seen I was very open and honest about goals conceded etc etc let me know in the comments how it does for you and please to keep commenting any future managers or tactics you want to see if you have enjoyed today's video be sure to leave a like drop a little subscription as well and i'll see you in the next video and if you guys did enjoy today's video here are going to be a couple more videos i'm sure you're going to love down here, you're going to see my previous video, and here is going to be a video I personally recommend for you guys to check out. Trust me, you're going to love it. 